Somebody check on Jayla. Somebody check on Bree. Check on motherfucking Slim. Because I know they at home punching the goddamn air right now. Because they are not a part of Baddies West. Now, this is a recap. A recap. A review of the Baddies West official trailer. Zeus just dropped the official trailer for Baddies West. This is season three. We're going to break down get into the details of what's going on, what we're going to be uh, having to look forward to. So if you're interested, stay right where you are. This is not the actual trailer. So if you're looking for that, please go to the Zeus Network app. Welcome back to Damien After Dark. If you're new here, hit the subscribe button right below this video. Almost to 1,000 subscribers. I'm like eight people away. So your support would mean the world to me. Those who have subscribed, I love you, love you, love you. If I could kiss you and hug you, I would. Don't forget as well to hit the thumbs up button. Like this video because when you do that, it's going to share this video throughout the YouTube community where more people like yourself can find us. Last but not least, join the conversation. I would love to hear from you, your thoughts, opinions, reads on the trailer what you think about it give me all your opinions in the comments below okay whoa we got some things to talk about okay if you haven't seen the baddies west trailer now go on over to the zeus network app and check it out again you're not gonna get it here i'm still fairly new to youtube i'm not trying to get my shit taken down for copyright so i ain't putting nothing up up here that i'm not allowed to now if there's any loopholes to that if any of y'all know any different when it comes to posting copyrighted material, let me know. But other than that, I don't want to post anything like that. that's Zeus's property because I don't want to get my, my, my channel taken down. Now, let's just start from the beginning. Let's start from the very, very beginning. Now, of course, as soon as the trailer opens, what do we hear? What does Natalie say? This season, we all about to get to the back. I'm just like, y'all, I rolled my eyes as soon as the goddamn trailer started. I'm like, Natalie, can you please retire this old ass, tired ass saying of yours? Like, we all gonna get to the back. Stop saying that. Like, we know y'all are getting to the back. We know y'all are getting paid for this show. We know y'all are getting paid for club appearances. We get it. Please don't say it like you did last season. 1500 times in production please edit it out if they keep saying it like what what do y'all not read the comments i'm convinced that zeus don't read the comments what they shit like i really am hold on y'all let me let me cut my brightness up because my shit is dim right now my phone just went on low power mode okay there we are now from the looks of it by the trailer it looks like Damn, it looks like the video is really bright now. I don't know. Hopefully, it turns out good for y'all. But it looks like from the trailer that each city that they go to on this season that one of the girls are performing, or all of the girls, because there's multiple baddies who have singing careers, who have rapping careers. So I guess they're going to be showcasing their music. Kind of how they did on Baddie South. We saw them perform in some clubs. So I guess... That's going to be part of this season is seeing the girls promote their music and whatnot in the clubs. Now, they, they're they going to be starting off in L.A. <clears throat> and then they're going to Vegas, Phoenix, Portland, and Oakland. And I'm okay with that. I'm cool with that. I'm down with that. You know, we don't really get to see much of Phoenix, Portland, or Oakland on these reality shows or on TV, period. So I think it's going to be interesting to see these cities showcased, to see, you know, what the ladies are like in these different environments, these different cities. <clears throat> One of the main storylines seems to be Krishan versus damn near everybody. From the looks of it, Krishan is arguing with everybody. However, it seems like she doesn't seem like she's getting as rowdy as she usually does. And a lot of the scenes that I've seen where they were confronting Rock, you know, she was she seemed cool. I mean, of course, this is just a trailer. We haven't seen everything yet. But I don't know. Do I want to say that it seems like Rock has grown a little bit since last season? Has she grown up a little bit since last season? I don't know. We'll have to see. Now, we see Natalie talking to Tommy 
on a private jet in the beginning of the trailer. They're on a private jet. It's her and Tommy. And she's talking about how Krishan claims that this is her show and she's going to be the star. So that's that gave me the inkling right away that, okay, Krishan is one of the targets this season. Krishan is going to be one of the one of the one of the girls that everybody's going to go after, uh, whether it's warranted or not. Because let's face it, Krishan has the most star power out of all these girls, right? Would Would you agree with that? Um, I mean, if you lined all these girls up and said, you know, had a group of a thousand people. And you ask those 1,000 people, which one of these girls do you know? And I feel like most people would know Krishan. Now, Natalie, Natalie's pretty known, especially in the BGC reality world. So she would be known too. But aside from Natalie, Rock is probably one of the most well-known girls on this cast. So it's going to be obvious for a lot of these girls to go after her. Because you're going to get camera time. It's going to be popular. It's going to be on Twitter. Um... Then we see Low London. We see Lauren London from BGC Chicago confronting Rock as well on being late and wasting their time. We see Rock say, how did I waste your time? So it's these little moments that I keep seeing where I'm like, okay, Rock is a target. Rock or Krishan, whatever you want to call it, she's the one that people are going to be after, right? Now, I'm still trying to learn some of these new girls names because y'all got to remember we got some new girls we got Reza, we got stunner girl we got uh biggie we got tommy we got um some dj chick i don't even know who she is to be honest if you're asking me it, the cast is too big we don't need 12 girls too much going on too many personalities and y'all are already on a little tour bus like 12 people on that but the cast should have been like seven eight girls max that's just my opinion do y'all like seeing more girls or less i'm just curious do y'all like a big cast of 12 15 women or do you like a smaller six to eight member cast i feel like when it's smaller we get more camera time from each girl we get to know each girl a little bit better um it's just easier to follow maybe that's just me now i used to be the y'all may think otherwise from my videos but I used to be a huge Natalie Stan. I loved me some Natalie Nunn. When everybody else hated her, I always loved me some Natalie Nunn. But whew, mama is looking rough. Mama is looking rough in a lot of these little moments that they're showing. Now, some would say, because at first I'm thinking, girl, if I'm going to be on TV, I'm going to make sure my, my lashes is popping, my lips bussing like skin on 10, I'm going to be looking good, right? Then I had to think about this. Natalie's been in the game 13 years. She's been filming shows for 13 years. Giving her the benefit of the doubt, she probably just don't give a fuck. She probably don't really care anymore. Like, bitch, I'm a mother. I want to show up how I look with no makeup. I mean, do you, boo? But, whew. I mean, I know Natalie's season has been 13, 14 years ago. We all change in 13 or 14 years. But Natalie, she's changed a lot. <laughs> she's slipping. You slipping, Natalie. You slipping. And for you to have all that money, Nat, that you claim to have, you have you a glam squad on, on set every day. You got your filming schedule. Have you a glam squad. I need you this day, this day, this day to get my makeup and hair ready to go. Now, um... I believe it's Razor who is accusing Scotty of touching her pussy on the bus. Again, correct me if I'm wrong, but we see Scotty and I think Razor going get it on the bus. And Razor is like, or maybe Stunning Girl, but I'm pretty sure it's Razor, who says, Don't fucking touch me. And you know, you keep touching me. And Scotty's like, I didn't I didn't touch your fucking pussy. And I'm like, what in the hell is going on here? We already touching the licking pussy already. Now, Krishan is after Natalie again. You remember last season, anytime Krishan had an issue with Natalie, she always spoke up. She always said something. And it seems like that they are butting heads again. And I told y'all last season in the in videos, videos, videos ago. Natalie's main problem, I feel like, with Krishan is 
Natalie doesn't want anybody who's more recognizable than her. Natalie doesn't want anybody who's got more star power than her. She wants to be that it girl. She wants to be the girl that when we walk into the mall, everybody's like, Natalie, Natalie, Natalie. But now when they walk into the mall together, it's Krishan, Krishan, rock, rock. This younger generation, this younger generation of 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18 year olds, young 20 year olds, they know Krishan. They know rock. They don't know Natalie really. Now, some of them might, if they were watching BGC when they were seven years old, you might know who Natalie is. Or maybe you're watching reruns. You may know who Natalie is. Okay. <clears throat> oh. Now. Krishan also rubbed Biggie and Tommy the wrong way. Y'all seen when they were on FaceTime with Krishan, Biggie, and Tommy was. And Krishan was like, you know, I'm sick of Natalie, yada, yada, yada. And um, I'm sharing my platform. And Tommy and Biggie didn't like that. Tommy was like, you ain't sharing nothing with me. Like, I don't need... So I was trying to figure out, like, what does she mean by that? She's sharing her platform. Is she saying that Zeus is her platform? This is her show and she's sharing it? I think that's why the girls got upset. Um, but we all know, like, come on now. Even though Krishan is the biggest star here, this is Natalie's show. Let's be real. She executive produced it. I mean, it is Natalie's show. If we're just going to be quite honest about it. Um, now, Scotty. I got I to gotta take a puff off my vape for this one before I, before I go in. Now, Scotty, I told your ass last season. Evidently, you ain't watched my goddamn reviews because I told you last season when Natalie had you looking a motherfucking fool and then come the reunion, she had you even looking more like a fool. And then, I mean, clowned this girl. Natalie clowned this girl so bad. And then she got the nerve. Scotty got the nerve to be up here on TV crying in this girl's face. I thought you were my friend. Natalie, no, seriously, I thought you were my friend. Girl, if you don't shut the fuck up and take your crying ass back to Charlotte, North Carolina. Now, listen, y'all. I wear my heart on my sleeve. I'm an emotional bitch. I'm surprised y'all ain't caught me crying on the motherfucking YouTube before. I, I cry. I'm an advocate for people who, I'm like, I don't think, I'm not one of those people who think if you cry, you're weak. I think in a lot of instances, someone who cries is a sign of strength. Because if you can cry around people, you're not worried about what people think. People who don't cry and they hold it in, they're trying to be tough. They care what people think about them. So I look at crying as a strength, not a weakness. We all cry. We all have to. It's human. But Scotty, you don't get a pass here because Natalie has shown you time and time again what kind of friend she is, which is not a friend at all. She's a co-worker. And you got this whole TV thing fucked up thinking that because she brought you onto this show that there's some sort of loyalty between you and her. There is no loyalty. Don't you know? Didn't you watch Bad Girls? There is no motherfucking friends in the Bad Girls Club, bitch. Now, I know this ain't the Bad Girls Club, but let's call a spade a motherfucking spade. This show was ripped off from the Bad Girls Club. The only difference is they're no longer in a house. Now, let's keep it real. They started it that way in season one. They put all the girls in the house. But when they realized their production team isn't worth a shit, they had to come up with something else because we were so bored for 10 episodes watching these girls in the house do nothing do absolutely nothing so let's not act like baddies is not just bad girls club for 30 40 something year olds that's it and you should know you should know scotty there ain't no motherfucking friends in this game so for you to be up there crying over natalie because y'all thought she was your friend she does it to all of y'all she did it to sarah she did it to christina she's done it to you stand on your own two feet scotty you should have took this season and separated from her a little bit. Had a little bit of distance between you two. Found you a different alliance. Because you trying to team up with Natalie every time. It's going to just hurt you every damn time. And I feel a little bit bad for Scotty. In a way, only because 
I think she does have true good intentions, and she genuinely thought Natalie was her friend. And I don't think Scotty is a bad girl. I don't think she's ruthless. I don't think she will throw you under the bus for the sake of a storyline to for for fact. I really feel like Scotty's probably a real good girl that come from North Carolina, and she got thrust into this Hollywood life, and it's eating her up. It's eating her up. Now. I wasn't expecting to see Biggie versus Roly, but we sort of see them going at it when we see Roly telling Biggie, you need to let it go. Let the shit go. You're still worried about that shit. And I think she's talking about uh, Stunner Girl because we see Biggie and Stunner Girl have some issues. So I guess Biggie keeps talking about it, keeps bringing it up to the point to where Roly tells her, look, enough is a fucking enough. So we're going to get to see that play out. We also get some vulnerable moments, some moments where we get to see um, Kat crying. We see Biggie crying. You know, last season we had those moments like with uh, Persuasion when she was crying about the cancer. And, you know, I don't like seeing people's downfalls. I don't like seeing the bad things happening in their lives, but it also makes them relatable when they're not just like we can't just see. 15 episodes straight of them fighting, pulling hair, drinking, and drama. There has to be some substance here. What's going on in these women's lives? So, you know, what's going on in their lives? What, what's their life back back home? And I think we're going to get a little bit of that. I'm not going to get my, 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 my um, hopes high. Because y'all know Zeus loves to let us down and flop like a motherfucking fish. But... Um, Kat is crying at one point in the trailer. She says COVID fucked everything up for her. So I don't know what she means by that, but I could only assume like maybe career wise. I know she does have a boutique that she has in Florida. So I'm assuming possibly COVID fucked up maybe, you know, her money or not really her money, but maybe business for her because we all know that a lot of boutiques, a lot of stores and all that kind of, those kind of things shut down during COVID. However, Kat's boutique is still open. I think it's called Avoir Boutique, A-V-O-I-R Boutique. It's still up and running. So maybe she's not talking about her boutique when she refers to COVID fucking everything up for her. We'll have to wait and watch and see. Now, one thing that I did notice that they did this season that I'm so glad that they did is that they are taking the girls out of their normal environments. If you remember in season one and two, we only saw them in the house. We only saw them in clubs and we only saw them on the bus. That's all we ever saw. And it was so annoying to me i'm like please can we get something else so it looks like we're gonna get some dinner scenes from the from this season we see the girls are out to dinner at one point they're at a table all sitting down together housewives style basketball wives style you know it's starting to feel more like a reality show versus a fucking cheap cheaply made show um so thank you for that zeus i'm not gonna give y'all too much credit until i see the first episode but the trailer is the trailer is trailering, okay? The trailer, it was trailering. Now another observation that I saw was um hold on y'all. I get up here and I get to talking and talking and talking and my mouth gets so goddamn dry. Now, from what I saw, the the if I had to say the breakout star of the trailer, the person who was in the trailer the most, who stood out the most, would have to be Stunner Girl. Damn, I need it. I should have did my brows before I came on here. Okay, stay on task, Damien. Stunner Girl. She was in damn near every scene in the trailer that we saw. Fighting somebody, screaming at somebody, arguing with somebody, simply just talking to somebody. Stunner Girl was there. Um, if you remember on the on the auditions, she was the one who wore the all she had like the orange corset on, she had the orange hair. Very pretty girl. Very pretty girl. Um, but it looks like Stunner's got a mouth on her. Either she got a mouth on her or she don't take no shit. Or both. We're gonna have to see what's going on with Stunner Girl. Um 
So she's going to be the one to look out for, good or bad. I don't know. Now, Stunner, I hope your bite is as big as your bark. Because if you're doing all this yakking, 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 but you can't back it up on the show, we the fans and we here at the after show, because that's what this is now. This is the official after show of Zeus. So when y'all want to come, when the shows are over, come here and we're going to discuss it all. So I hope that Stunna's bite is just as big as her bark. Don't be on TV showing out now, running your mouth and then getting your ass whooped every five seconds. Um, but if you can back it up, Stunna, I ain't mad at you. I ain't mad at you. Okay, now somebody, Zeus, if you're watching, somebody give security a motherfucking raise, okay? Security needs a fucking raise ASAP because the things that they put these girls through or the things that the girls put security through. I mean, we've seen some shit before, but there was one moment where they were on the bus and there was a security guard in the middle of the bus hallway trying to hold the girls from one another. <laughs> Excuse me. And there was a girl back here and there was a girl right here. And they were literally climbing on top of the security's head to get to one another. And I'm like, are they paying these men what they should be paid? I hope they got some good life insurance policies on these security guards. Got some good insurance because, baby, you couldn't pay me to do that job. I'm not getting my motherfucking tooth knocked out or a black eye fucking with these hoes. Hell to the no. Now, did y'all see Natalie... Putting hands on Scotty. Anybody else peep that? Yeah. And the reason why, let's talk about it for a minute. Because I'm pretty sure it was Natalie. And it would make sense to be Natalie putting her hands on Scotty. Because we know Natalie ain't going to really put her hands on many people. We don't see her fight that much. Because, let's face it, Natalie can't really fight. But she going to put her hands on Scotty. We know that for a fact. Why? Because Scotty is her doormat. Scotty is her lap dog. She sees Scotty as an assistant. She sees Scotty as less than. She sees Scotty as I got you on this show, bitch. Speak when you're spoken to. Be seen, but do not be heard. Scotty's pretty much the redheaded stepchild. And until you prove otherwise to me, Scotty, what I really would have respected out of you, and hopefully we'll see this in the season, is when Natalie was running up on your ass, you should have knocked that goddamn chin into next week. You should have did a did an uppercut uh, and just sent that chin from here to here. From to here. That's what I would have done if I had been in your position as a woman. Hell, as a man, if a female would have put her hands on me like Natalie, I would have whopped her right back. But instead, what did we see Scotty do? Wait, no, no, wait. Like, what? What? I was like, am I really what? Did you not learn anything from last season, Scotty? Like, why are you here? I was low-key in my head. I was rooting for Scotty this season. I'm like, you know what? They're bringing her back. I hope she redeems herself. I hope she's more likable this season. By the looks of the trailer, you look worse, Scotty. You look worse. They should have brought back Slim or Bree at this point. Hell, I would have took Jayla. And I'm sorry, y'all. But I can't, like, just a little secret between me and you. I can't stand Biggie's voice. I can't. When I hear Biggie talk, ah, my, that, that bitch got a deeper voice than me up there talking, talking like this way. I can't do this. I can't do this. I can't do this. I'm like, God damn, can we get this bitch some, what is it called? Not testosterone, estrogen. Can we get this bitch some estrogen? God damn. Now, towards the end of the compilation, oh, I'm sorry, towards the end of the trailer, we see this compilation of fights. And you know how at the end of a trailer, it starts getting more and more intense, and it's like, bam. Bum, 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 bum. And it gets just more intense, intense, intense. So we get this little this little compilation video. Um, um, Y'all know what I'm trying to say. Just a little, I don't know. Anyway, the girls are fighting, knocking over production members, knocking over production equipment, screaming at each other, yelling, throwing shit, 
Like it's it's it looked bad. And I'm I've said this before, but I'm gonna say it again. If this show continues season after season after season after season, Zeus is gonna get a lawsuit. Zeus is going to somebody's gonna get a lawsuit. Somebody is going to get severely hurt, if not killed. I hope to God nobody gets killed. But somebody's going to get hurt, killed, paralyzed, severely injured, put in a wheelchair, something. Because there's only so much. And this is the thing. The thing that makes it so bad is when we see all this violence playing out, there is so many people involved. Not necessarily people. so many people fighting. There's just so many bystanders involved. You got producers and cameramen and security and assistants all in the way. And we know, let's look at Bobby I Love You Purr when Dimitri threw the motherfucking liquor bottle. Or was it, no, it wasn't Dimitri. It was um, Hot Wheels threw the motherfucking liquor bottle at Dimitri. Like, I'm talking about things like that. Y'all hit somebody in the head with the liquor bottle hard enough, you're going to kill them. You're going to kill them. And it's all fun and games and lights, camera, action until somebody gets killed or paralyzed or in the fucking ICU. Then what we going to do? Show going to be canceled. Zeus going to be motherfucking sued. Zeus Network stocks are going to plummet. Nobody's going to be watching the show no more because y'all ain't going to have a show to fucking make. I just hope that Zeus has a hella insurance on deck. I hope they got a good team of attorneys because y'all going to need it. Like Y'all going to need it at the rate that these shows are going. We love the drama. We love the fighting. We love to see it. But there was a reason Bad Girls Club was a success and got away with the stuff that they got away with for so long. Because, well, I say this, but then I think about the Claremont Twins season and how the Claremont Twins sued the hell out of Oxygen because of what happened to their shit. But that wasn't really a violence situation. That was a destruction of property. I'm speaking on violence. I don't think Oxygen and, and, and Buna Murray and Bad Girls Club, they wouldn't have let the girls get so physical to the point that someone's going to get seriously hurt. They always tried to break up some fights. They'd let them fight, get some licks in, but then somebody would usually step in. Um... Now, it also seems like Krishan is still up to her messy ways. And when I say messy, I don't mean like messy drama ways. I'm talking about messy, dirty. Because we see at the very end of the trailer, Natalie is sort of mocking Krishan. Y'all seen where she opened the refrigerator and she's like spilling drinks all over her saying, I'm Krishan. Hey, Blue, where you at, Blue? Spilling juice all over saying, this is Krishan when she makes a mess, when she doesn't clean it up. So it seems like Krishan, y'all remember last season, Pers Persuasion brought up Krishan being dirty and messy. And what happened? Krishan washed her ass up in the sink, washed dishes with her ass. So I'm thinking, all right, Natalie, you walking a thin line because when Miss Mama cleaned your ass up, I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it. Okay, so anyway, that is the trailer review. Now, the first episode, the season premiere, airs next Sunday. That is January the 22nd. And you don't want to be anywhere but here after the show ends because this is going to be the official after show now. Next week, we're gearing up with two, two back-to-back -back reviews and recaps. We got Krishan and Blueface Crazy in Love, and now we've got Baddies West, so we're gearing up for a busy rest of the winter and spring. Make sure you guys come here after the episode ends. I'm going to try to have the video uploaded as soon as I can. In the future, we will also, I'm planning on starting to do my reviews live, so right after the show ends, you can come and, um, Come to my YouTube page, set your notifications on your phone so you can get notified when I do go live or when I do post a video. But we will start doing the recaps and after shows live in the future. Um, also, I want to hear what you guys have to say about this trailer. Join the conversation. Leave your comments, thoughts, opinions in the comments. I want to hear from you and I will try to get back to you as quick as I can. 
Also, don't forget to subscribe, subscribe, subscribe to the channel. I would so appreciate it, and I will love you forever if you do. Uh, also, let me know in the comments if you do subscribe. That way, I can give you a special thank you. And like this video. Last but not least, like the video. Hit the thumbs up button. That's going to help this video be shared throughout the YouTube community. I love you guys so much for watching. We'll see you back next Sunday for the Baddies West season premiere, season three premiere recap and review. Also, stay tuned for the Blueface and Krishan Crazy in Love season one, episode five recap. I'm actually going to start recording it right after this one. So uh, I love you guys so much for watching and we'll see you next time on Damien After Dark. See ya.